There are a lot of ways to quantify this. This will be your fifth fight since December of 2011. It'll be the first time since the Super Six that you've fought twice in the same calendar year. And all those are ways of saying that you have been through a period of inactivity looking back now at the last five years. Do you have any regrets about the choices that you made? To bluntly answer the question, absolutely not. Um, it's amazing to me that I have to continue to answer these questions. There's these red flags, oh, you weren't as consistent as you should have been. I've been boxing over 20 years. I, th I think a lot of people are putting way too much into this. I think it, it, it's been a storyline way too long. I understand it, um, but it, it's, it's not something I think about on a day-to-day -day basis. You wrote an open letter to Muhammad Ali, and a central focus of the letter that you wrote to him was what his identity meant outside the ring. Do you see an analogy between his three and a half year political exile do you see a kinship between yourself and I mean, Ali? It's kind of hard to compare myself in any respects to Ali, but you have to acknowledge what was done outside the ring. And it allowed individuals like myself in rough times to, to look at that and say, man, he, he did that and he got through it. Now all of a sudden, I've gone through and got past on the other side of my situation. I'm a lot sharper business-wise. I'm, I'm a lot stronger. I'm fortified. Some of the trials and tribulations we go through are not just for us. What prompted the move to 175 pounds? Probably a couple things. It was hard to get other 68 pounders in the ring. It was like trying to pull a teeth. Uh, some was politics, some was just, you know, not being able to make the matchups. And uh, the other piece was, is, you know, I want to be great. And it's that simple. You know, all those that I've studied, continue to study to this day, Roy Jones, Bernard Hopkins, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, the list goes on and on. They moved up. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Uh, but we took on the challenge and I'm excited about it was the target of going up to 175 pounds then, specifically, let's get the Kovalev fight. Of course, I mean, you, you can't come to someone's neighborhood and they're the big bad wolf in the neighborhood and not expect to, to, to knock on the door and want to play at some point. I mean, what's the point of going up? Sullivan Barrera, I thought you got hit with one right hand. Did you feel it at all? No, nah, it, not, it was nothing special about it. Yeah. All, all respect to him, but it was nothing that was out of the ordinary. So what are you looking for in the brand fight? Man, I, I got to go out there and, and perform, like I just said. There is no Kovalev if I don't perform August 6th. Here's a Wiley veteran who, you know, very awkward style. He, he's very unorthodox. I mean, he, he, he just has everything to gain and nothing to lose. If he loses, he's supposed to lose. If, if he wins, he shocks the world. Does he have the puncher's chance? Yeah, everybody has a puncher's chance. I mean, I think if any grown man hits you in the right spot with a 10-ounce glove, some weird things can happen. So Barrera and Brand are good enough for you to view as the right preparation for fighting Kovalev? I mean, I look at it like this, Jim. I've been fighting over 20 years. If I'm not ready for Kovalev now, I'll never be. Did you watch him against Chilemba? I did not. He's not my next opponent. I, I, my focus will be exclusively on Kovalev come August 7th.